said, always mean it. And Pat and I always look forward to, you know, doing the show. And today we have with us a distinguished member of our community, Commissioner Jeff Hayes. <laughs> Commissioner, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, the, the commission recently has done some uh, incredible uh, programming in the area here uh, for a very special reason. I know you're going to tell us about that. Right. Uh, tell us all about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just finished um, five events um, mm -hmm. honoring uh, the, the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. And we called it the MLK 50 Committee. We put together five events. They started in uh, late March mm -hmm. and concluded on Sunday, April the 8th uh, with a, a very inspiring um, mm -hmm. interfaith uh, worship service yeah. mm -hmm. at Bethel Temple. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we started again strategically we looked at the events and we wanted to try, try to draw people in to the MLK 50 events yeah. um, and we wanted to draw in people that maybe had never been to an MLK event before uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know people listen to it and we've had a little bit of it in school and people will in you know the beginning of the year will celebrate his birthday yeah. but given that this was the 50th this year April 4th was the 50th anniversary of the slaying of Dr. King, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though he has passed and gone on, his dream is still alive. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to put a series together that made people reflect on the dream. And as I said before, we wanted to bring in people who may have never really participated in an MLK event before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we started with the very first one called A Taste of Culture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, when we want to get together as as people mm -hmm. we often do it over food that's right you know we break bread together yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. and usually if you break bread together you can put aside some differences mm -hmm. get a common bond and mm -hmm. start to so we thought that's how we would kick this off okay. and we had I was like 14 or 16 different restaurants donated wow. their food uh, they were um, food of different cultures mm -hmm. and some of the restaurants actually came in uh, attire of their culture mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the great thing about that event was when you looked out at the crowd it was families okay. you saw a lot of young couples bringing their children in mm -hmm. you know so we were starting to plant the seed with with people who you know are four or five or six and this is their first yeah. hearing maybe of Dr. Martin Luther King mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so we were able to again to to not only just try to feed the spirit that night, but also feed our bellies a bit, yeah, yeah. and um, and to to enjoy that. And the entire time this was going on, we had clips of Dr. King's speeches or his marches mm -hmm. or events up on the wall, mm -hmm. and allowed that to go and just let people talk and start to enjoy each other's company, mm -hmm. uh, start to share memories, uh, and just start what we were was hoping would be a, a series of events that bring people together. Fantastic, fantastic. I hate I missed that taste of culture. I would love to have been to yeah, that. Oh, it, was, it was so good. <laughs> it was yeah, so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and again, whatever your tastes were, there were uh -huh. there was something you could do. And, right. and uh, we finished off with dessert, so we had everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you, ha you could get your, your foods, and then you could have a little dessert. Mm -hmm. And as I said, then uh, we were able to celebrate. And, and HMAC. Um, they actually hosted it for us, um, and uh, it was a great venue and a great place, and they were great hosts for the event, and that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Then our, our second event was the very next evening then, during the snowstorm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. up at the Civil War Museum. We had Dr. Pretzer come up from the um, uh, Smithsonian African American Museum, yes. the, mm -hmm. the new museum mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. down there, and we weren't sure whether we'd have it or not, yeah. but when we talked with uh, the doctor beforehand the day before uh, he said the, they were closing down the beltway and he couldn't drive mm -hmm. up from DC and this was going on. he goes but I want to be there I want to make sure I do this presentation and when we heard he had changed plans and and got on a train and the train was going to take him to Baltimore to Philly to Harrisburg wow. and he was determined to get here we said you know what if 10 people show we're having mm -hmm. the event mm -hmm. and he was able to get to Baltimore then we get a phone call and he says mm -hmm. my connector is delayed Wow. And so he was supposed to go on at 7.30. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll get there at 7.40. Come on. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll work it out. And mm -hmm. we got him there. Mm -hmm. And he did a very inspiring presentation about the works of Dr. King. His, his, um, his um, topic 
was civil war to civil rights. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he was actually able to take a, the part of the museum mm -hmm. and he highlighted the, if you were to go to the museum, this is the part of the museum we're yeah. going to talk about. So he walked us through the displays of the museum nice. and the importance of the museum. Mm -hmm. And he walked us mm -hmm. from uh, activities of, of folks from the civil war up to civil rights. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that was so important for me mm -hmm. was People in central Pennsylvania, where we live, yes. mm -hmm. we have a great, rich culture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. a great, rich history. Mm -hmm. And far too many natives of this area mm -hmm. don't know don't it. Don't know it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when they sit and they learn, and we, we hope this just sparked a little interest in people mm -hmm. going out to learn about their own history. That's right. And when I say their own history, I mean our history here in central mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that we had uh, civil rights leaders here before there was a civil rights movement. How about that, that we had people mm -hmm. sitting in kitchens mm -hmm. in the old Eighth Ward talking about the Underground Railroad and That's how right. they were going to help folks mm -hmm. get here and different signs or symbols they were going to transport elsewhere mm -hmm. to give people the path to freedom. Mm -hmm. Or the fact that um, you know some of the early early movements of the abolition movement happened right here right in here. Harrisburg. That's right. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And so you know, and I, I can't go without saying this, you know, and I'm not native of this area either, okay. mm -hmm. but I moved here and Caleb Jackson, oh, yeah. who is, uh, you know, an individual I'd love to talk to. I, mm -hmm. I think that man knows more about history mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. any history book Isn't I've seen. Something? Yeah. <laughs> but he told me a story of a gentleman named Jacob Compton. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Jacob Compton was an African-American businessman. Okay who lived here in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say he worked for uh, Governor Curtin. Mm -hmm. And he had, had a stagecoach business. Mm -hmm. And he would transport people. You know, he was sort of the, the taxi cab of his day. Yeah, yeah. And he would, he would move people and goods. Mm -hmm. And what struck me about Jacob Compton was, as we all know, when Abraham Lincoln was elected as president, mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln came through Harrisburg on his way to DC. And that, those days, mm -hmm. they took two months and they toured the country and they'd thank people who voted for him. Mm -hmm. Well, Abraham Lincoln came to Harrisburg. He'd come up out of Baltimore, mm -hmm. came to Harrisburg and was going to spend the night here. And his director of security at the time, Mr. Pinkerton, mm -hmm. name we may know, uh -huh. That's name right. security. That's but Mr. Right. Pinkerton mm -hmm. came to him and said, mm -hmm. there are rebels coming out of Baltimore mm -hmm. uh, and they are coming here to kill the president elect. Oh, wow and we need to get him out of town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people were fearful of doing that because they knew if they got caught taking Lincoln out, mm -hmm. what do you think the rebels were gonna do to them? How about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. But this young African-American businessman named Jacob Compton okay. said, I'll heed the call and I'll take Dr. Lincoln, out. I'll take President Lincoln out of here. Hmm. And so Jacob Compton took President Lincoln mm -hmm. out of Harrisburg where the rebels were coming got him to a train and got him on his way to Philadelphia wow. and if you think about that this mm -hmm. individual from who was a resident of the city of Harrisburg mm -hmm. who was an African-American businessman at the time mm -hmm. saved our nation How about that and we mm -hmm. don't talk about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. think what our history would be like mm -hmm. if the rebels had caught Lincoln and killed him in Harrisburg what would Harrisburg be known for How about yeah. that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But because of the courage of this, I don't understand why we don't have monument statues. We aren't doing things mm -hmm. for this man. He's one of my American heroes. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that night was very important to me because we wanted to instill in people um, that Dr. King's message and his life and his dream was for us to know our own history because we'll make mistakes if we don't know That's our own right. history. We That's need right. to know that. Yeah. And it'll bring us together again, I think, as a community if we start to talk about that. Mm -hmm. What, what kind of turnout did you have that night? Because, you know, I was surprised that you went on and had it, but I was like, oh, okay. It was, it was mm -hmm. not what we expected, but okay. we had 50 people what? come through the snow. Get out of here. Uh, mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was so bad when we got up to the museum, you couldn't tell where the road was. I know. <laughs> but we had people, and every person who came there, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the presentation that night went a little longer than expected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't have anybody leaving. They wanted oh, to stay. Wow. They wanted to hear it. We've now been asked if we could have more people come back. Now, we actually have people starting to talk about, and this is, again, we wanted to plant seeds mm -hmm. 
We now have people talking about putting together bus trips to go down to the museum, oh, yeah. the African American yeah. Museum, yeah. Yes. Uh, to learn the history. And we've been there, so, mm -hmm. so it's and you know, wonderful. so you know how, oh, yeah. how good it is. It's fantastic. And so now, mm -hmm. because of that event, we have people wanting to take that journey and go down there good. and see that. Good, good. Yeah, I, I wondered about that. I saw where Ruby Dobb uh, put right. some, post some things on Facebook, and so I was able to, I said, but no, this must be another time, because now oh, that's no other thing. I'm sorry. No, it, it was there. Uh, that's, that's wonderful. Okay. Take mm -hmm. it off that's great. And the next event, what did you have after that? Well, then the next event was um, then on April 4th, mm -hmm. on the anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King mm -hmm. at the Civil War Museum again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was not open to the public. That was an event that we had for our high school students. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, if, if each event, we wanted to touch a different part of mm -hmm. our community. Yeah. And one of the blessings about that event was when we put it out to the schools, mm -hmm. you know, some of the, the very first schools to respond and said we want to participate were from Northern Dolphin. Yeah. Oh, okay. And again, so we were now bringing in another part of our community yeah. because mm -hmm. far too many times when we talk about a, a Dr. Martin Luther King event or we do it, people think that's a city event. You know, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a event. Mm -hmm. Well, it was great to see that another part of our, our county said, no, we want to be a part of it. Beautiful. So we were able to have over 300 students oh. okay. uh, from, I believe, every one of our public schools. Mm -hmm. We had our private schools there and we had some whole home school students great. there. Mm -hmm. And some of us know Harry Jones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, sure. Harry Jones mm -hmm. delivered a um, a speech, a talk that day that was all inspiring. He is fantastic. Um, yeah. <laughs> Diane Wilson opened up with oh, a song. Okay. Uh, it actually felt like we had left the church service mm -hmm. when we left there. <laughs> at the end of the at the end of the program it was so great. The the students were up, they were singing, they were clapping. Wow. And it was interesting. I watched a couple of teachers, you know, they weren't as quick to join in, mm -hmm. but as soon as they saw the, the kids having a good time yeah, going on, yeah. then, then the ice broke and the yeah. teachers were enjoying it. Yeah. And it was, it was very, very, very moving. Okay. And again, mm -hmm. our goal with that was we wanted to get, again, young folks involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had a booklet that we had put together and we put some three or four pages of sort of unknown facts about Dr. King in yeah. there. Yeah. So that our hope with that was that our teachers, our educators, mm -hmm would go off the normal path. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows the I have a dream Everything. speech. That's right. mm -hmm. We wanted to take them somewhere else to That's learn right. something new. Good. You mm -hmm. know, and one of the tidbits we put in there, and something you probably know as being um, um, leaders of faith, mm -hmm. um, but we lost Billy Graham recently. That's yeah. right, yes. Mm -hmm. And interesting, in my research, I found out that Billy Graham and Dr. Martin Luther King had a great friendship. Oh, okay to the point that Billy Graham referred to Dr. King as Mike, mm -hmm. his birth name, his birth not, name. not his, right. his mm -hmm. name that they took mm -hmm. uh, later. Mm -hmm. And they, they had this wonderful relationship that mm -hmm. was there. So mm -hmm. we wanted, and I thought it was Tom Lee since we just lost, mm -hmm. lost Billy Graham. Yeah. So we put some of those tidbits in there. And the fact that mm -hmm. um, the, the musical group U2, or U2, yes, mm -hmm. uh, a band from Ireland, yes. uh, more mm -hmm. of a rock band, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. two of their songs Dr. King was their inspirations, and two of their songs are dedicated mm -hmm. to Dr. King. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to highlight that Dr. King was also an international figure. Yes, he was, yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. if you have a rock band in Ireland mm -hmm. yeah. doing songs about Dr. King, that yeah. means something. Mm -hmm. But it, you're talking about Bono, 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 right. I think right. he's it, But he, if you ever studied that guy, the lead singer yeah, of know. YouTube, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, he really is ordered in terms of social issues and humanitarian issues. So I'm not surprised that he would you know, follow something or do something right. in honor of Dr. King, yeah. Great. You know, and we put in there, that, you know, a lot of folks may or may not know, mm -hmm. Dr. King graduated high school at the age of 15. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. uh, and went on, and, and he didn't want to be a pastor. No. You know, and, and one, of my, <laughs> one of my biblical heroes is mm -hmm. Moses, mm -hmm. and I talk about that because he's yeah. a reluctant leader. That's right. And if you That's think right. about Dr. King was a reluctant, was reluctant leader. leader. He did not want to be the pastor. That was his father's profession. And his grandfather. He wanted, yeah, <laughs> he wanted to do something different mm -hmm. at first, mm -hmm. but the calling came to him, calling and he came. did that. So yeah. those are some of the tidbits we wanted to put in there to, mm -hmm. to inspire educators to take a different 
path when they teach about Dr. King. Another thing is, you know, a lot of people do know that Dr. King went to uh, theological seminary in Chester, Pennsylvania. Correct. It's called Crozier. Correct. Know, and it's like, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of connections here with Dr. King, great stuff. And when I was in college, his uh, sister taught at Cheney uh, State College and then became Cheney University, uh, Dr. Uh, Ferris. And so his wife would come up and visit her quite a bit. And one of my professors, Dr. Barbara Black, was best of friends to Coretta Scott King and Dr. Ferris. And then one of my other little tidbits is I was uh, at a ba uh, basketball game, Cheney versus Westchester. I went to Westchester. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden the doors open, and the entire King family walks in. This is after Dr. King had been assassinated, of course. And uh, she brings in all of her kids, and she comes up, she sits down, her knees are literally touching my back. And so we're all sitting there, and everybody's like, this, you know, and of course everything stops, everyone's plotting. And so we all turn around and said, and she said, oh, no, no, let's just watch the game, you know. But then I'll go down to Atlanta, yeah. and I go into Ebenezer, you know, Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and who's getting out of the car except Credit Scott King? And so I said to her, by that time, by the way, one of the sad tidbits is people don't remember that Dr. King's mother was shot and killed in the church. Correct. You know, and this is a little bit, maybe a week or two, a month after uh, that had happened. And so there were, deacons standing at the door, but they really weren't deacons, they were police officers. So when they, said, they saw me and this other gentleman standing there in the hallway waiting for Credit Scott King, they said, you know, is there a problem they did like that with the guns showing? <laughs> and we like, no. But I was able to say to her, it said, uh, you know, I just want you to know that uh, Dr. Barbara Black from Westchester said hello. She said, what? She comes and takes me by the arm. She says, you know, Dr. Barbara Black. And then she goes downstairs with us and said to for half an hour throughout the service, just talking to me and this guy about a little bit of everything. Credit Scott King. I'm sitting with eyes just big. You know? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah. And then, you know. But anyhow, and it's just a great time. So, but you had another event, the last culminating event, which you alluded to already. Well, mm -hmm. we had another event on the 4th before we got oh, to right. the service. The 4th, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the evening uh, of April 4th, mm -hmm. we had a, um, a theater show at Gamut Theater yeah. mm -hmm. in Harrisburg, mm -hmm. and it was called Voices of Few. And um, Sankofa, which is the, um, the theater group, mm -hmm. African-American theater group, yep. mm -hmm. uh, Sharia Bean uh, was the, the lead performer. Mm -hmm. And she did a, a performance of uh, Francis Watkins Harper, yeah. mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. a leader, uh, not only just a, an African-American leader, mm -hmm. but a, a leader of women's rights okay. mm -hmm. way before her time. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she walked mm -hmm. us through her story and it was it was very moving and it was deep but she was able to t put a little touch of comedy in there mm -hmm, at times mm -hmm. and that she would tell her story and then she'd say um, things like uh, if you want to know that I think you guys would call it Google and you can Google yeah. it. You know, so, so she was able to take yeah. us back 200 years <laughs> but still bring it in today right, and, yeah. and um, that was again we were trying to reach to those in our in our community mm -hmm. that appreciate art, the performing mm -hmm. arts, mm -hmm. and to bring the folks from performing arts together and, and have that night. And the great thing about that event was the event started at 6.30, mm -hmm. the play started at 7.30, mm -hmm. and at 7.01 mm -hmm. Eastern Time, mm -hmm. which was the time in which that bullet was fired. Yeah. Uh, we had, as a community, a moment of silence. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, as we did that moment of science, I'm sitting there in Gamut Theater and getting ready for the play and mm -hmm. looking at the audience. You know, it was a moment to reflect. And the thing was, at that point in time, yeah. mm -hmm. at least a good portion of our community of Harrisburg mm -hmm. did a moment of silence with the rest of the nation. Yeah. Because we know in Memphis and elsewhere, they were mm -hmm. doing the same thing. That's right. And it was, again, a way for us to reach beyond our own community mm -hmm. and become part of the larger community and um, at 701, we joined in with millions of folks yeah. that were paying tribute at yeah. the same time. And yeah. it just felt to be a real honor to be mm -hmm. able to participate in that as well. Absolutely. Um, Fantastic. So it was, it, was, it was moving on many, many different parts. Mm -hmm. You know, not just the play and what was going on that night, but mm -hmm. the, the moment in time that we were in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think was was really enjoyable as well. Fantastic. And and again, wow. that was a packed house, and we had um, mm -hmm. uh, that show mm -hmm. when we announced it within two and a half days. There were no tickets left. Wow. Uh, and again, planting of seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
that has now caused Gamut Theater and Sankofa <laughs> to talk about mm -hmm. doing another series next year yeah, good. and maybe doing mm -hmm. it over multiple days. So mm -hmm. um, that's part of our mission and our goal okay. was to get the community involved in, and not just celebrate the dream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once a year, mm -hmm. but to start to live the dream as a community and I really like put it. down mm -hmm. our differences and think about what do we have in common mm -hmm. and what can we do together to make our community better. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. And I really think that if Dr. King were alive today, he'd be disappointed with some of the stuff that's going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. If you look at his, mm -hmm. his pictures of his movements, his marches, mm -hmm. he would not, you, would, you didn't see him holding a sign, angry faced. No. Mm -mm. Which we see too much of today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. what he did is he would grab your hand mm -hmm. or he'd lock your arm mm -hmm. and say, come with me. Mm -hmm. You know, we may differ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, some of his best friends were Jewish or, mm -hmm. a, or a Hindu or some other. Right. We may differ on the, the way we take the path, yes. but we're on that same path yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we need to get back to that. And that's oh, part yeah. of what we were doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that gets us to the last service, mm -hmm. which was uh, on Sunday, uh, 7 p.m. at uh, April the, the 8th up at uh, Bethel Temple Beautiful on service. Front Street. Mm -hmm. And it was all inspiring to sit there and see clergy of 18 different walks of faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. come together. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we had Hindu, we had Muslim, we had Jewish, we had Catholic, we had Christians, we had, you know, the, the um, mainstream Christian churches, the mm -hmm. sort of not so mainstream That's Christian right. churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had everybody come together in a beautiful candlelight service um, that it started out with a procession of candles, and that was very symbolic again in the Jewish faith. Candles mean a lot, mm -hmm. but we were also trying to show, uh, as a committee, we were trying to show that our generation had the candle, and we we're going to pass the candle on to yeah. others. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, so the candles played a very important role in it. And then another, I thought, very moving point in the service mm -hmm. was when we had uh, religious leaders of five different faiths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm come up and read in their own language mm. um, a very similar prayer. Yeah. Mm. And as I sat there and I thought, if we can get five very diverse religions mm. to basically say the same prayer, yeah. pray the same prayer, same words, mm -hmm. you know, we as a community can start to do that That's as well. Right. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And then we finished, you know, the children, Again, it was about passing the light on to mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And we finished with the children singing This Little Light of Mine. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and I just thought, that, you know, that was extremely moving as it well. It was. It was very moving, yeah. And the turnout was just really, just very, very well attended. Yeah, it was hard, hard to tell. I mean, I, I talked to someone who goes to synagogue, and they said that they thought it was about 400 folks. They, wow. The front mm -hmm. section, and then they added chairs they into the back, back section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and again, we then finished with food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we started food with food, great. we finished with food, <laughs> yeah, and it was yeah. way to break bread. It was great. But we had a, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really want to say a special thank you to the, mm -hmm. to the committee that did it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. The, the committee, met Gloria Martin Roberts was the co-chair with me, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ellis Roy was there, Vera Cornish was there, George Connor was there, Amy um, Harinoth was there, mm -hmm. Ruby Dobb was there, yeah. Jenny Jenkins was there, mm -hmm. San, um, uh, Sanford Krefsky was there, yeah. uh, and we had everybody come together. Uh, Caleb Jackson. Yeah. Okay. Everyone brought a different piece of the community together mm -hmm. and worked on it, and that was a blessed time. You know that committee. Mm -hmm. um, again, very interesting group that came together, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but everyone really rolled up their sleeves, got involved. You know, Ruby Dobb was the one who sort of kept us all mm -hmm. connected mm -hmm. and in motion and. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and moving forward, and everyone played their part and made it very enjoyable. Robert uh, Scott was good. He had some nice words to share. Oh, he was at the oh, service. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was very important to us because yeah. he actually knew Dr. Yeah. King. He knew Dr. King. And he had yeah. marched with Dr. Mm -hmm. King. And so, again, that was part of us wanting to bring back, bring our past and our history yeah. to life in the service so that yeah. we could pass that on to others. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was inspired. I, uh, you know, had a chance to participate as one of the presenters, and it right. was just... I was just sitting there thinking to myself, this is powerful stuff. But when the kids came out, I'll say that again. That was like, man, yeah, they just get, yeah. me, they get me every time. Uh 
Yeah. But you know, and beyond even uh, you know the offerings that you have for Dr. King, uh, you also have a program uh, through Parks and Recreation that the commissioners uh, support with uh, Brother Larry Moore and what's it, uh, Goodman? No, not good. What is it? Uh, Great Design Church. Oh, yeah. You're bringing that program uh, oh, yeah, around on uh, uh, Black History Month. Black History Month. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are doing some really great stuff. That mm -hmm. brings the whole community out as well. Sure. You know, so, the young yeah. people, when they get the yeah. day sessions, the young people from all the schools come. Yeah, right. All the we do that, yeah. right. We do that mm -hmm. with the schools during the yeah. day, and then yeah. we take it out to the community in the evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about um, maybe trying to find a way to involve Sankofa in, in the Gamut Theater and the folks in that next oh, year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would we, be good. We have our own. Mm -hmm. yes, we, do. we have our own people that we want to promote and, sure. and have great pride in our own community. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of stories still to be told. A lot of stories still to be told. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the group that comes out of Philadelphia does a fantastic they do. job. They really do. They do. But I agree with you, too, that we do have talent here. And it'd be great Melissa to see Sparks that talent. has been mm -hmm. our, our go-to person out of Philly, and she's okay. done a great job. Okay. Um, and, you know, there'll still be a role for them. Good. But we want to... We want to engage our own folks, our own oh, talent, no, and, and be proud of our own people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, so, and Sharia yeah. Ben's one of the best. She is just she sure absolutely is. She's great. passionate, too. She, she is, is, yeah. Definitely. And then, of course, she had in that program Maria Chow, right. one of the best poets I've ever known, and is, uh, along with uh, Julia Mallory, she's right. fantastic, you know, poet and performer. And it was so, great to see good. those three ladies work together and how they did that. It was, mm -hmm. yeah. it was really, really nice. They're very good. They're very good. Very good nice yeah, job. this is great stuff. Well, you know, one of the things I want to say to the community is, you know, our commission is doing a lot of great work in a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of ways, and we need to support them and uh, get involved. Uh, and obviously, the community is responding because each program, other than the big snowstorm, of course, right. but all the, pro all the programs are really well attended and yes. stuff. Uh, so much on your plate, I know that there may be something else that you want to just give a little nitpick at real quick as far as the commission is concerned. Uh, anything else you'd like to just inform the community while you had the, well, the microphone? Well, yeah, and, and I, I hope this. Again, when I talk about what we did, we were trying to plant the seed. We're trying mm -hmm. to get our community to think a little differently and come together. Yeah. Instead of seeing our differences, let's see where, where we are alike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, it's a lot easier walking down the path of joy than it is a Amen path of misery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and um, so we're hoping that we're starting to help move that, yeah. uh, that thought process there. Good. And where yeah. that's important... You know, as we're facing the opioid problem and yeah. the drug yeah. problems that are out there yeah. and trying to, I was going to say try to save our next generation, but it's trying to save our own generation. Right. Right. It's touching everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the only way we're truly going to um, put this uh, disease away is if we start working together. I agree. And mm -hmm. the resources, quite frankly, aren't there to really... Yeah do as we may want. So we've got to be smarter with it. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that's our next step forward. All Fantastic. Right. Well, I know we're quickly running out of time, but uh, Commissioner Hayes, thank you so much for coming oh, on. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to the entire commission for what they did mm -hmm. to bring you know uh, that together and the committees that worked on it. You just did a great job. Yes, you know? they did. So we certainly mm -hmm. enjoyed it and it, it, it made our community better. No question about it. Dr. King's ultimate aim was the beloved community. I think the commission helped us to see uh, that that's very possible. Right. So again, thank you so much. And thank you so much for supporting this program. Hope that you have yourself a blessed day. Keep on trucking. We'll see you next time here on Life of Steam. Goodbye.